Good evening, everybody. I hope your week has been good. And as I just introduced us, this evening is really good. And if you would categorize your week not being as good, I will, I will tell you one thing. This evening will be the shifting point. And if your week has already been good, this evening will make it even better. Say amen. First, we will start this evening by thanksgiving, giving thanks and praise in our Lord. For the Bible states that we should enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts and graces. So first, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you that we have another time for you to spend in fellowship with you, with your spirit. We thank you that you have provided in this week us the food to eat, the water to drink, the shelter upon our heads, the, the clothes to wear. You have provided everything that we have ever needed. Lord, thank you that we have had the privilege to connect with each other, having uh, with each other fellowship together with you. Lord, thank you for all the devices we have. We thank you even for the internet connection, electricity, for we can through, through these devices, through these things, have come on together, gather in your name. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Thank you for these privileges. And Lord, we thank you most of all for you yourself. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you are so good. You have, every time we have gathered in your name, you have spoken to us, you have changed our lives, you have shared short things from your word thank you lord even this night is not a change that's you will even this night speak you will in this night even change lives lord and we will be ready we will not be like the jacob at the battle for first time for he said and god was in this place and i knew it not but lord we know that you are here for where two or three are gathered in your name you are there in the midst of them lord we discern your presence even in this evening and we glorify and we magnify your name for you are worthy of all the thanksgiving all the presence all the glory lord we worship your name in jesus name we have prayed and let us next we will bless this evening all together completely and after that we will go and continue from the chapter that the holy spirit has led us even two previous times subject of strong nuts. but let us first bless this evening ask our god's our father's blessing for this whole evening so lord we come before you thank you that you have showed through your spirit the subject that we need to look upon you has seen and you know what is happening in the spirit so lord we thank you for this provision that you have given us the knowledge the intelligence that we will see not with our physical eyes but to the unseen and true that we will move through your scripture and to move to know to consider to understand what is happening and true prayer true praise we are combating in the spirit so that your power your light your kingdom may advance wherever we are are we in europe are we in africa are we in america are we in australia are we in asia lord your word is same whatever time whatever place so lord we ask your blessing for this scene that you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in your knowledge that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened that we may see from your word your secrets and we might know you more and lord that you through your mighty power as the scripture says I am full of power because of the Spirit of God that we will tonight not go by our strength or our might, but by the Spirit of the Lord. So our lives will be changed for your glory. Lord, thank you for this evening. We ask that we might know you more even this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. So for, I'm, I'm going to take the first scripture place from Esther, chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh, it says, On that night would not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. In the spiritual situation, a couple of chapters before, Haman had been exiled in the high position, and he had, through, through the people, through, with the people counseling together, set a certain date for the destruction of the Jews. Then Esther tried to arrange the banquets, first banquets, and next morning, the next day was the second. But on that evening, on the first after the banquet, Haman was very displeased because Mordecai, Mordecai didn't bow to him. And he was going to next day, next morning, going to ask for the king to Mordecai to be hanged. And that very night, the king read the chronicles and the shifting point came. Now, the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. There are days the Lord has made, and there it is shown by his prophet. 
provision. It is seen by not only the dread, physical dread, but all together provision. With it is seen by his blessing. It is seen by his presence. But there is also the day the devil has made, and we have clear example of this at jo in Job's life. He had what had a fence over him, are all around him. God, he was protected all around. But one day came that he, Job knew that this was not the day God has made. Because on that day came the steel, his destruction, killing, and he lost his possession. He lost his flocks. He lost his children all in one day. And he knew this is not the day Lord has made. But now we come to question, even Mordecai was going to face the similar, same situation, the day the devil has made. But on Job's situation, in Mordecai's situation, they wouldn't even ask, why would there be a consul to determine, determine my whole future and I'm not invited in there? No, that cannot be. This was the strong man attacking behind the Mordecai, trying to destroy Mordecai and even to the whole, every Jew in the face. And they were not in that council. They were not invited. They, it was decided in the darkness. It was decided be, be here, uh, in the, they behind. They weren't invited. They are just who should have accepted what was happening. But no, something happened to do to make that plan useless. And so the Mordecai, Mordecai in that situation, Haman was spiritual weakness, uh, representing a strong man. And this can be in many of our lives, uh, have happening, going to happen in many of our lives. Somewhere behind back, some people, spiritual weakness is negotiating the day the devil has made for our lives, but we are not aware of it. Go trying to destroy our day, are trying to destroy our life, trying to destroy our future. But there is a remedy. Because Mordecai was not bowing to that Haman. He was not bowing because something greater, we are not bowing to the Haman because someone is, who is greater is in us, the king of kings. He's not bowing to anyone. He does, he's not fear of anyone. But because of that, the devil tries to destroy us because we belong to the king of kings. But now Mordecai wasn't delivered just because he believed on God. Actually, that was the very reason he was going to be destroyed and killed. But what happened? What was the key for the release? Chapter 6, verse 1. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. What is written will bring the solution. What is in front of you right now? The Bible, the scripture is what is written. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ died for our sins. It is said, written that he spoiled the principalities and power and triumphed triumph over them in it. So in the cross. So we are bringing the remembrance, the chronicles, the books, what is written to cancel the day the devil has made upon our lives. Because Jesus Christ's precious blood has paid every sin, every iniquity that we want there is the day the devil has made. But we will go triumphantly in the triumph, in the victory Jesus has made. So we will declare and we will decree that this, what is written, will be upon our lives, over our lives, immersing our, on every side, building uh, like a fence over us, all around us, that is protecting us from the day the devil has made. So we will stand before you, Lord our God. We lift our hands, we lift our voice to you, our Lord. And Lord, we bring your remembrance what is written. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has died for us. And we decree and declare that his blood is enough for us. His death is enough for us. His victory is the victory we are living in and we are going forward to and in that victory. We are in Christ. If someone wants to get us, he wants to go, must go to God first and then to Christ and then to us. No, we are your own God. We are your handiwork and we belong to you. We are not to be made to be destroyed by the devil in single day, in single instance. No, we are made for you all days. We are made to do an advance in communion with you, in fellowship with you, not in the day the devil has made and destroys our lives and our future. No, we, our bodies and our spirits belong to you, our Lord. We belong to you to give glory to you and the devil state doesn't bring glory. So we bring to your remembrance, Lord, what is written concerning our future. You have said that your plans for us, of your future for us, is of is good and of his Lord. That is our future. It's a future with you. It's not with fear. It's not with killing. It's, it's not with stealing. And it's not with destroying, Lord. 
We bring this spoon to your remembrance. It is what is said for us, and we believe what you have said for us. Lord, this is our lot. This is our lot. Not according to what we have done, but what Jesus Christ of Nazareth has done for us. We are not righteous by our righteousness, but we are righteous we of his righteousness, and we advance in his righteousness. When the devil comes to us, he does doesn't see our filthy clothes. He doesn't see our filthy garments, but he sees Jesus Christ's perfect righteousness, perfect will of people, God's will, obedience to God's will, perfect conscience, change to God's will in purpose, in thoughts, and in actions. He sees Jesus Christ's cleanness when he looks at us. There is no, just like Jesus Christ said to the Say, so we will declare to the devil. The devil came to me and he has nothing in me because I am washed, I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Mm. Amen. So the devil might have trying to put days upon our lives. Uh, what he has made, try to destroy our lives, our future, or our days that we haven't yet seen. But every on those days, we are not moving but what we see. But we are moving what is written. We are bringing to God's remembrance what he has said concerning us. Uh, concerning us. And we must look through the scripture, look through the eyes of faith, what he has said of us. Not going in the good situation situations thinking that this will continue forever without me doing anything we will continue in him in jesus christ and when we are continuing in him when we are in him when we are obeying him we are we love him we want to fellowship with him through that communion through that fellowship he speaks to us he will say that no today you cannot go this way you did it before oh someone has asked you to come uh, to pick someone to come to go somewhere at some location with you but when you spend time with the lord prefer at the early in the morning or sometime at the time and at the day that you will know what is god's plan for you today because jesus christ said that i do only what i see my father do because at some day there's a day devil appointment made for you by the devil but you don't want to attend that appointment so the lord will say no don't go there at this point that's not my appointment for you so you will be protected so we will now pray according to this that our time our fellowship with lord will be in uh, strengthened it will be increased it will become such a happy to us that we start our days of with him we start our moments with him through every situation through every question comes to us we will pray what is his good perfect and acceptable will for us so we don't go but our intelligence but our minds what we see or feel but we will go by the spirit and in the spirit so lord we, we come before you we boldly before the throne of grace and we ask our lord that open our eyes give us the grace is is very moment that we will search you diligently we will wait upon you we are drawing closer to you with all our heart so we will find you that we will just like our master showed example jesus you were you are god you are perfect you are perfectly perfect you are god god doesn't need to pray but when you was on earth when as you came as a man and you are as a man you prayed you saw an example that man should always pray and so we will take our position in the same that we will pray we will pray and pray and pray be strong in the lord pray we will be praying in season and out of season we will pray with understanding and we will pray in the spirit building ourselves within our whole most holy faith pray in the spirit so lord so we pray now that your wisdom will be imparted to us we are in we fellowship with you in prayer in communion with you lord that we will start out this we will come end out this we will in uh, even between and in the middle all the points of others we will be connected to you so that your wisdom will be imparted and your wonderful wisdom 
will be working true and in our lives. Just to screw to what they said to the cassette, the cassette, it's true that we situations we don't know that we don't understand, but that your wisdom, your spirit through us will guide us to avoid the days, to avoid the development, and bring us to the unseemly appointments, to the un we you know wisdom seems to lie, but is made by you to go in that places, that situations where you have made us stay open the door for us and in Jesus Christ's name we say and we call man the doors that the devil has opened that look fancy look good but it's not, it's not the door the Lord has opened in the name of Jesus Christ we command those doors to be shut down and we open our ears to hear where Lord wants to guide and in the Jesus Christ's name we command and decree that every door God wants to open to us that has been shut for a time for a reason or another in the Jesus Christ's name we open the door so that we can walk boldly to it, to the destiny, to the future, to the day, to the fellowship which God and the day that the Lord has made. Thank you, our Lord, that you open our understanding, that you open our eyes to see you, that you open our ears to hear you. And Lord, we turn our hearts to you, that we will start and end and in the daytime be with you. Because where we start our day, there we will end it. And where we start it, that is our focus for the day. Lord, you are our focus. You are the one whose will we seek to do, not our own will, oh God. So that we wouldn't do in each day, in every situation, in every moment, not our will, but the will of him who has sent us. The will of him who has ordered us to go. The will of him who has begotten us. Lord, that we wouldn't do our deeds, but only what we hear you say. Lord, thank you for your guidance. For even today, and Lord, we will go forth from this on, starting with you, ending with you, fellowshipping you with you all through the days. That we will be powerful in your name, not in our own strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God has appointed us good days. He has opened us doors now before our hands. But we need to see and to understand where he is leading us. We need to see the appointments, where he wants us to go. Just like Jesus Christ, he wake up early in the morning to pray all the night to appoint the 12 apostles. And he went to pray to the mountain alone. He spent time alone with God. When he had fed the 5,000, he sent his disciples to go beforehand. Then he sent the people away and then he went to pray. He started and ended his days to pray. He was in fellowship, close connection with the Father. And that's why he knew what was God's will for him. He didn't went, he didn't go to situations and places where he didn't know what happens to, uh, un, well, under the circumstances. Because he was in fellowship, he was in control what is going to happen and what he will act on those situations. So we must grow in character. We must grow with our fellowship in God so that we won't go to situations. We've been gone to places and then see what happens and then act based on what happens. But we will go through that fellowship to situations we have heard God ask us to go and we will do the reactions. We will not, re not reactions. Yes, not reacting, but acting because we are making the initiate because we have heard what to do so lord we pray that our orientation will be changed that we won't go the situation the strong man has made we won't go the situation the devil had made for us but we are the acting force we are not being pushed down and seeing when the devil tries to attack and speak to us and what do what how we will react and what we will do now no we are the one who makes initiate and the devil has to to react to what we do. We will do the first move because we know through the Spirit of God what is the will of God. And know that we will move, we will speak, we will hear what to do in that place, in that situation, in that time. Lord, your spirit is upon us. You have anointed us to preach the good news of the gospel. You have anointed us to deliver the pro to heal the program and to deliver the catches. You have made us able ministers of your word, Lord. But we have walked in such a low, low position, such a low 
place. We are made, made uh, decisions based on how we feel, how we see. We are made come to situations and reactive to things. Lord, Lord, we take our step and position in Jesus Christ's name now, in the authority of Jesus Christ, in him we are, that we are not going and reacting. We are going by the Spirit and we are acting, Lord, because we are made a king, king we are kings and priests in you, Lord. Kings are not guessing what happens, what to do, and we have kings are the one who determines what happens and orders and commands. So we are kings here, his priesthood on earth. We are true praying, going forward, and taking dominion of the devil. And so we go any strongman, any situation, every enemy's present doesn't go forward. We are the kings of the most high God, and we go in his name he has given us, and his order he has given us to destroy the works of the devil. By the brightness he shines to us, he, the devil will be destroyed, and by the brightness of by the spirit of our mouth, he will be destroyed. Lord, we will go because you have sent us to go. We will go in the order, in the kingship you have made us to be, and the priest was in the bringing sacrifices of prayer to you, starting, ending, and being all the time in the fellowship with you, so that we are always connected to you, because we cannot be and act as kings if we don't work as priests, because we don't have the wisdom and the power of a king, of the heavenly kings, because if we are not priests, we are not connected to the heavenly power socket, to the heavenly power source. So, so Lord, through prayer, through fasting, we take our stand and connection to you, and we will be like a cables of heavenly power to this corruptible and corrupted world, to the incorruptible God, to the perfect, almighty, eternal God, full light, who is that light, that life, that incorruptible, that immortal, will come to this corruptible life, will come to the full of situation of death, and so we will see the almighty handbook, we will shake the gates of hell, and we will take the possession, the land you have given us, so Lord, because you say to the Israelites, you have given them the land, so Lord, we decree and declare, we will go, we will shake the gates of hell, it's time, it's a sure time that we, the church needs to shake the gates of hell, so we will decree and declare, we will call to the heavenly power, so and so, Lord, we will be your cables to bring the heavenly power, the heaven's power to hear, to work, to take the nations, to take the possession that Jesus Christ has given us, Lord, because you have sent us, you have made us able to minister, and you have said that we must preach the gospel everywhere, everywhere we must need to preach, preach it, our Lord, Lord, but now you have given us the power, you have given us the authority. When we are connected to you as a priesthood, we will go and conquer as kings. And where we don't see churches conquering as kings, Lord, we will go through them in the midst of them, loving them and encouraging them, Lord, touching the sin through the spirit and Lord, encouraging them, raising them for rise and shine for thy light has risen, Lord, and your light, your power says, we will bring the power to the dead and will raise him up. And Jesus Christ will bring him light. That is the situation. That is the verdict to those churches where your life, where your power is not coming from the heavenly source, from the heavens. So Lord, your power will flow. Your power will overwhelm the earth because your church is going to take over. We are not anymore subjects to devil's influence, to devil's oppression, to devil's saying what to do and when to do, how we will react. No, we are taking the initiate. We are taking the first and we will see the mighty hand of God moving the more the reign of the latter days is creating and in the former days the first day. Lord, the house, the glory of the latter house 
house. It's greater than in the former house. We haven't yet seen anything because the Lord our God is going to move in such a way that our ears will be saved. Jingle. But Lord, we will see your mighty hand on you in Africa, in America, in Australia, in Asia. Lord, there are so many nations. About 30% of the whole people of earth haven't even heard the gospel and there's no chance for Lord, we make the decree difference because, Lord, it is written, oh, this is the generations that seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. We are the ones who come. We are the one who is written of us because we come in the name of the Lord, our oh God, the Lord of hosts. And we will say to the gates and the ancient doors, be lifted up. This kingdom, this place has been far too long here. The devil's scales, the hell's scales. So we will come on those situations, those places, and those countries, and we will say, in Jesus Christ's name is lifted up, because the King of glory comes in, and we will go in, and we will conquer the devil's places, we will conquer where the devil has oppressed, we will conquer there, where the devil is taking the high control over the people, in complete darkness and destruction, but we will be connected to the heavens, and we will go in the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit to free the captive, to heal them, seek, heal the broken heart, to bring the good, uh, good news of the ears that Lord has made for the good ears. We had a good news to preach to them, and we will bring the good news. So, Lord, because you have made us your ministers, kings and priests for you. And when we are priests, we will be connected and we can work as the kings you have set us to be. Lord, there is no the day the devil has made for us. We won't enter that day. We will enter the days the Lord has made. We will your, see your provision. Your name will be hallowed. Your will be done and your kingdom will surely come in our situation, our lives, in every our situation of our lives, in every place we go, because we are not sent by our own might. We are not sent by our own strength, but by the Spirit of God, and we will go in His strength, and we will pray, we will fast, we will read the Word, we will preach the Gospel, because we, wherever we are, what position ever we are, and Lord has made us come into we are there, not female, not man, not slaves, not teachers, not not some normal workers, bus drivers, not some not some apothecary, apothecary people. We all have one thing. We are witnesses. We are witnessing of the heavenly power. We are witnessing of our Lord Jesus Christ to them. We are not arguing. We are not condemning. We are not proving. We are witnessing. And when Paul went from place to place. He didn't come by the beguiling words of the man of wisdom. He went by showing the power of kingdom of God. So will we go. So will I go. So must I decree. So we must decree for ourselves. I will go in heaven's power. By the spirit of God I will go. I will not be oppressed. Not with sicknesses. Not with mental problems. Not with any situations the devil tries to kill steal or destroy me me, but I will go by the Spirit of God, glorifying God in my body, glorifying God in my spirit, prospering even now our soul prospers, our even as we prosper in you, Lord, because we are hover, overwhelming from the abundant life you have given us, our Lord. Lord, you have made us, and we are going, Lord. We need to change, we need to understand the character you have given us. We must be changed such as you are, because there is no sifting of shadows in you. You are always good. You are always loving. You are always powerful. You are always in full control. So was, must we also see. Not that even on the shipwreck on the sea, when people are slowing all the hope of their lives, drinking and throwing all the cargo over, but not eating for 14 days. But we are constant. We are not shifting like shadows. 
and rich shadows. But we are always faithful through with complete integrity because we know that our God is able. Nothing, any shipwreck, any sea condition, any storm cannot take the storm of like any shipwreck there seems to be. Any those things, any throwing the all the cargo out of the boat cannot shake us because we are as constant as the word of God is. We are as constant as God is. But we will declare that the spirit of God God's angel, who am I serve, the God whom I serve, his angel standed last night at my side and spoke that none of us will, I, well, I will preach the gospel where Lord has sent me to do, and I, none of the those people traveling with me will be also saved, because the God has given us this gift. So, Lord, we are those ministers. Even we are in the ship, when the storms try to rage, where the devil tries to make us look at the seas and the winds like he, he, he made Peter to do. No, Lord, we are looking at you. We are not looking at the left or the right at the back we are looking straightly before to you even in the storms of life even when all the people 200 people over next to us who has thrown the hope of their whole lives away we will look at you and we will declare to them do not be unbelief why is your faith so we don't look at this look at jesus christ our lord for he has made provision. He has conquered the de dead. He has overcome the devil. And we will overcome the devil by the blood of the land and by the word of our testimony. Lord, you have done it. And so it will be. We decree all of this in our lives. And we will see, not just decree, we will see it manifested in every area of our lives. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. So next, uh, Andrew will come with, continue. Over to you, sir. Amen. Thank you very much. We will continue from where Johannes led us. Esther chapter 6 verse 1. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. Johannes explained to us that there is a night for Satan, and there is a day for God. There is a time when Satan appoints evil, when Satan thinks of exterminating and destroying an entire race, beginning from someone who is representing that race. Mordecai appeared to be representing a race of righteousness, appears to be representing a tribe of godliness. And as a result of that, he refused to bow down to the strong man of his time, who was a man, because it is written in scriptures, we must worship God alone, we can't bow down to man. That infuriated a man. A man began to plot the destruction of Mordecai and his people to tell the far-reaching consequences of his anger. He had already erected a pole for Mordecai. But something that was unknown to Mordecai was that a pole was already hanging for him, only waiting for the breaking of the day. But prior to that time, Mordecai had sent to Esther, you are in the kingdom for such a time. That's Esther chapter 4. And if you do not rise up at this time, deliverance will come from somewhere else. And Esther took up the challenge and said, go and gather the Jews that are in Shushan. Go and pray and fast. I also will do so with my servants, and then I will go to the king to appeal for our lives. If I perish, I perish. They had prayed. They had called upon God. They had fasted and waited on God. They had depended on God as if that is the only thing they had. And truly speaking, that was what they had. The physical existence of Esther the queen in the palace could not automatically destroy the strategy of a man. A man was a strong man, such so strong that even the wife of the king, Esther, could not, as a result of her position, ultimately overturn the dictate, the edit, and the plan of such a strong man. They had to pray. That's why we are here. This tells us that our physical position, our financial means, our academic prowess, 
our ways of thinking that looks intelligent, that looks awesome, pales into insignificance when we compare it against or contrast it against the authority, the pattern, the wise, and the strategy of a strong man like Aman. And we know that Aman's authority, Aman's plan, Aman's strategy was to destroy an entire race not to leave any remnant behind. And all the plans of Aman were conducted strategically and Esther, who was in the palace, had no idea of what Aman was planning. That is why we need to pray tonight. There are many things we do not know. There are many things we have no idea of. Certain Aman had risen in certain generations, certain places of work, certain environment, certain village, and they have made up their mind and said, well, as long as you are the Mordecai and you do not bow down to me, I'm going to hang you upon a gallow. And the plan has been set up. And to execute the process, to execute that homicide, to execute that assassination, they need the endorsement of the king. They need the endorsement of the king. Quite similar to how Satan sought for the endorsement or the privilege or the permission of the almighty God to the disaster of Job. A man could not hang Mordecai without the king giving a seal of approval. And the Bible says, Esther chapter 6 verse 1, which we have been looking at, said on that night could not the king sleep. There is a sleep that need to get away from those that would disapprove of our disaster. There is a trouble that they need to have on their bed so much that their seal of approval will not be granted to spiritual assassins. A man plotted the disaster of Mordecai and his entire family and his race and his generation. The difference between the outcome of that strategy and the reality was the seal of the king. And the Bible says on that night, that king could not sleep. Or that translation said on that night, sleep fled away from the king. We are going to begin by praying. We will come to other prayer requests later. We are going to start by praying and lifting up our voice to God. Either we like it or not, there are amens like that that do exist who are seeking for our anger, who are seeking for our disaster, who are seeking for our sorrow, who are seeking our defeat, not because we did anything against them. Mordecai did not offend a man, physically and literally speaking. He was always at the king's gate. He was always coming to work promptly. He never lacked or slacked in his business. Yet, when he came to the matter of his God, he began to infuriate the powers of his time. How about Daniel? Similar thing. Daniel didn't slack in any of his king's business. He was a very hardworking, faithful principal in the government. Yet, the enemy were infuriated because of his God, because of his worship of his God, because of his intimacy with his God. We are gathered here together as believers to pray against strong men, spiritual strong men who are angry, infuriated, annoyed because of your God, because of your refusal to compromise with evil, because you have chosen to stand for righteousness, because you will not take bribe, because you will not manipulate things, because you will not circumvent justice, because you will not oppress the poor. Certain people are offended because you are not corrupt and you will not agree to corruption. Certain people are offended that you will not lead your voice, lend your voice to criminality. And so they are plotting your downfall. And so they are plotting to demote you. So they are plotting to take away what belongs to you from you. We have to appeal to the King of Kings. And so let's begin to pray tonight and begin to call upon God and say, Lord, here we stand. We remove kings. We remove thrones and dominions from every power that have been vested upon them to commit evil and disaster against the people of God. Let's begin to pray. In every nation, in every tribe, in every language, in every country, in every continent, 
strength in every family, anywhere there are powers, either it is religious power, either it is governmental power, either it is institutional power that have been erected in such a way to fight and crush the people of God and destroy God's people beginning from yourself. Let's begin to pray by extension. Let those power be arrested. Let them be in that. Let them be turned backward. Let their enterprises be disappointed. Lift up your voice and pray and call upon God. That night the king could not sleep because a man called Mordecai was to be delivered from the gallows of a man. Let's begin to call upon God for believers who have been persecuted in Russia, who have been persecuted in the Asia, who have been persecuted in Cambodia, in Vietnam, in China, in India. Let's begin to pray in Pakistan, Islamic countries, wherever they have been arresting and plummeting the people of God as a result of their stand for righteousness as certain a man had already on gallows waiting for their destruction and their destruction and their destruction and their defeat. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Let those power now be destroyed. Let the vantage position for which the enemy has authority as Pagwasu Cavalier Terrico Maskinetai. Let that power be taken away from them. That night the king could not sleep. Let's begin to remove sleep from everyone that want to endorse our destruction. Anyone that want to endorse our calamity. Anyone that want to endorse our disaster. Anyone that want to endorse every evil. Planned by any strong man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let's lift up our voice and pray in any continent where we are, in any place where we belong. Stand for yourself. Stand for your family. Stand for your nation. Stand for your ministry. Stand for your career. Stand for your kids. Stand for your spouses. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every strong man, negotiating for a gallow for your life, begin to call upon God. Oh Lord, you will not sleep. Oh Lord, you will not sleep over this matter. We serve a God that does not sleep and does not slumber. Let those who are the aim of a fear, who are to negotiate, who are to endorse that disaster, let them not sleep in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. This is how to fight the strong man. Mordecai never had any physical interaction with the strong man, but ultimately, that strong man was destroyed. That is what we are talking about. Tonight, we are going to live here with the evidence, with the certainty, with the assurance that strong men in our lives have been destroyed. Strong men in the nations have been destroyed. Strong men that are fighting God's righteousness, fighting revival, fighting evangelism, fighting righteousness, fighting the move of God. Let's begin to call upon God. Let those strong men be destroyed. I believe we are calling upon God. I believe we are praying. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let every strong man be bound. There was a night of Satan planning for the disaster and the destruction of Mordecai, but that night never come to reality because God was on the throne. God is still on the throne. God will continue to be on the throne. Let's begin to call upon that God and say, Lord, behold your people. Deliver us, O Lord, together from the hangings of a man, from the plot of a man. Let this strong man be judged. Let his wickedness come before your presence. Do my campaign the liquor in homes. Let them not go scot-free. Begin to call upon the name of the Lord. It is time tonight to execute judgment over strong men holding people to ransom. How many times many people have died prematurely because certain kings, certain dominions, certain authority endure 
trust, the plans of strong men against their lives, against their finance, against their health, against their soul, and they were summarily executed. Vengeance belongs unto God. Vengeance belongs unto God. It is time tonight for believers to call upon God. It is time tonight for believers to cry and say, Lord, I will not be destroyed by strong men. Strong men like a man. It doesn't matter what they had planned in the night. Why they were planning. Israel was unaware of the evil strategy of a man. Why they were planning. Israel was was unaware of what a man had learned to do. But yet there is a God that still rules in the affairs of men. And that God showed up. Begin to command and say, now let sleep flee away from all those who have the authority to reverse the plan of a man. Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Let sleep flee away from those that have the power, the authority, the legal jurisdiction to reverse the plan of a man. Let sleep flee away from them. That night the king could not sleep. He let every nation, every tribe, every government, every institution, every locality that has been had the negative, negative trend of things, arresting believers, putting them into prison. Let's pray for members of the body of Christ who have been hired, who have been assured, who have been destroyed as a result of their stand for righteousness like a man. Men that will not bow. Men that will not be corrupted. Men and women that will stand for Christ and Christ alone who have been held into prison, who have been arrested and joined and summarily executed. Let's begin to pray. Let those gallows of those a man be judged. Let there be a supernatural move tonight. Let those authority begin to have a divine encounter. That night the king could not sleep. That night the king could not sleep. As the spirit of God showing shown you certain strong man in certain places afflicting your soul, afflicting your life as the spirit of God shown to you it is time for you to call upon the name of the Lord. Every strong man against your soul, every strong man against your life, every strong man against your ministry, every strong man against your health, every strong man against everything that concerns you. And many who have said, by this time tomorrow, you will be hung upon the tree. That strong man is a liar because there is the king of kings who does not sleep, who does not slumber. Let's begin to pray pray and call upon the name of the Lord do not be tired of praying lift up your voice tonight is a night of deliverance from strong men that judgment that plan that execution will be reversed let everyone who will be sleeping over your case wake up. Let everyone who will be sleeping over your case wake up. Everyone whom God has set up to deliver as an agent of your deliverance, let them awaken out of sleep. Everyone who has been set up as an agent of your freedom, let them wake out of sleep. Anyone who has been set up by God to set a you of a deliverance from the hands of a man and they have been sleeping for years. Let them begin to wake up tonight. Begin to call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I will not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. A man will not kill me. A man will not kill the work of God in my life. Begin to pray like that. I will not be summarily executed as a result of jealousy of a man. Begin to call upon God. None of your family members will be summarily executed as 
as a result of Aman's jealousy, begin to pray. Every king who needs to help you, every ruler, every authority who have been sleeping for years, who have been saddled with the responsibility to deliver man from evil, let those kings begin to wake up from their slumber, begin to pray. Deliverance by fire, emancipation by fire, Holy Ghost intervene. Let not the king sleep anymore. Kings and authority, dominions and authority, powers and principalities. Rulers of darkness in high places. Anyone using the imagination of darkness, using the imaginations of the night to arrogate evil, to conscript evil for our lives, aggregate disaster tonight that king who not sleep rise up and pray call upon the name of the lord it is god's time for our emancipation it is god's time for our deliverance it is god's time for our rescue it is god's time for our liberation this kind go no for but by fasting and prayers. Oh, that men we pray, pray that kings that hold the weapons of evil be destroyed by fire. Let the king who have the power to upturn disaster wake out of sleep. Let those who are be restored by God to intercept the workings of a man be delivered from spiritual slumber. Let's begin to call upon the name of the Lord that to Night, that night the king could not sleep. King Azeros lost his sleep because someone like Mordecai needs to be delivered from the from Emma's gallow. Begin to call upon God. Begin to pray and say, Lord, every king that has the authority and power to release us, to release our nation from the onslaught of a man strong man. Let such a king awake out of sleep. Let them be released from slumber. That night, the king will not sleep. The night before, he was able to sleep. That night before, a, a, a man was perfecting his strategy. A man was carrying out his assignment. A man was plotting his graph. Those men he was going to recruit to erect the gallow. That night, the king slept. But at a night, when in the morning a man was going to hang Mordecai. When a man was seeking for the approval of Mordecai, approval of Mordecai's destruction, that night the king could not sleep. Let's begin to pray every nation where a man has been plummeting and destroying the souls of men who are standing for righteousness. Every continent, every country, every tribe, every language, every ethnic group, we are certain a man has risen up against the people of God. We are praying for the body of Christ. We are negotiating for the release of the people of God in prison. Tonight, let's say in the word of power, let the king not sleep. Let the king not sleep. Let those who have been unfortunately imprisoned be brought out by morning. Your present situation is it because the king has been sleeping? 
<laughs> your present predicament is it attached to the sleep of a king? Mm. Are you comfortable with what you have experienced so far? Are you struggling with certain operations of a strong man? Do you find yourself upon the gallows of life? Are you systematically losing life in this world of existence? Are you realizing that you have been deprived of oxygen and your survivor appears to be hung upon a balance? Is that the workings of a strong man negotiating for your exit when God has not commanded it tonight? It is your opportunity. They call the baton of courage and boldness and begin to demand for the resurrection of the king from spiritual slumber. That night the king could not sleep. He commanded that the chronicles of record be brought before him. That was the turning point of Mordecai's life. That was the turning point of the life of the Israelites. That was the turning point of the life of Esther. Esther would have been destroyed as the result of the plan of a man. But God, but God, but God, never one second late, always intervene at the right time. It is time to pray. Call upon the name of the Lord, brethren. Do not slack in prayers. Something is happening tonight. We are waking up the king in Europe. We are waking up the king in America. We are waking up the king in Australia. We are waking up the king in Asia. We are waking up the king in Africa. We are waking up the king in the Middle East. Everyone that endorses the sponsor of spiritual terrorism, physical terrorism, material terrorism in the name of Jesus, let them not sleep tonight. Let the Holy Ghost intervene. Let them be a massive deliverance of nations and people and tribes and language. God is looking for those that we pray. God is looking for those that we pray. The secret to the deliverance of Mordecai was prayer. Esther said, go gather the people and I will pray and I will pray and I will pray and I will go to the king and if I perish, I perish. Men man no man they call myself Brethren, we've got to pray. May not always to pray and not to face. It is time tonight to release the people of God from the strategies of a man, the strong man. It is time tonight to liberate an entire family from the duress and the threat and the subjection of the strong man. Mahumali Sobra, Nino Mene Humene Tiede Vila Surya, Re Humene Tinanda Humaske Vile Shinde Vrele Te Kurian, Hunene Malitero Masura Vajayna Maluta Nevale. Let's begin to pray. Diga to the Valita, Hunamata Imahura, Neri Mane Kureba Sende Vile Chinde Humakara Malitandi Vale, Mandende Vrele, Nimi Numara Humakasi Vile Chinde Humakatina Paluza, Kabine Meru Valeti De Kreme. Nema Mutabi Papasa, no more woman to go. Mamma Bucci, the busy never over the woman who made the Matin de Marucala, Matin de Lumasa, Catin de Genemeruca, Baruca, Bain de Beruse de Veletelia. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Caldimolon de Rebellicaria, Mini Manuna Matine Velisecatuia, O Matin de Veletina Husia, pray, 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 pray. The king who not sleep that night, the king. King could not sleep. Mordecai was about destroyed. That night, the king could not sleep. Mordecai was not aware that that night was the night of his destruction. But he was wise enough to pray. You do not know what the enemy has planned for tonight. It is wise to pray. It is wise to pray. What has Satan planned for your generation? What has the enemy planned for your family? What has Satan planned for your soul? What has Satan planned for your spiritual life? What is Satan planning for your real life? What is Satan planning for the grace of God in your life? That night the king will not sleep. That night the king will sleep. We should not be ignorant or ignorant of the devices of the devil. Man, the woman said the village. The let all souls the kind of body rivers of the say the very men of the hash, Miku the Vesi Gravy Latina Tire, or Dicade, the Vivo Sukatilevay, in the name of 
Jesus. Let every sleep be taken away from the king for our rescue. In Jesus' name we pray. Last prayer point on this matter. The Bible says, and the king commanded that the chronicles be brought before him. The chronicles of record. Why? Because when the king cannot sleep, the king has to spend his time doing something. He didn't just want to while away his time. Something compelled him to ask for the chronicles. Something compelled. You see the systematic intervention by God Almighty. Number one, God removed sleep from the king. God gave him opportunity to have time for himself. God removed sleep of the king in his bed chamber and the Holy Ghost compelled the king to read the chronicles of books, the records of interventions, the glory that have been hidden from man's side, and the chronicles that have documented the victory of Mordecai. That chronicles have been hidden. That chronicles have been hidden from the face of the king, and that has what has brought Mordecai to the place of authority. Imagine that. You see the possibility that your victory has been documented by heaven. In the chronicles of life, you are supposed to be at a particular place at a particular time. You are supposed to engage certain people at certain places in certain locations. But for whatsoever, and that can be written concerning you, but for whatsoever it is in, it has not materialized. It has been locked up in a drawer. Your promotion has been locked up in a book. And my dust begins to accumulate upon your promotion. It has been written in heaven. But on, but on earth, it has not manifested. Is there a possibility that the chronicles concerning your victory, the chronicles concerning your longevity, the chronicles concerning your soundness, the chronicles concerning your health, the chronicles concerning your glory has been written and eaten somewhere. It has not come to the presence of the king. Tonight, you are going to begin to negotiate and begin to say everything that has been written concerning me Every good thing that I've been looking for, I invite the Holy Ghost to give me the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. I want to let the people get the key. Oh my God, oh my God. Tonight you will be remembered. Tonight the Holy Ghost will remember you. Tonight the power of the Holy Ghost will remember you. Thank you. 
Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Tonight is a night of power. Tonight is a night of visitation. No more again and again. to the king. The chronicles were brought before the king. Ah, you have a chronicles, brother. You have a record, brother. You have a record, sister. It has to come before the king tonight. He had a celebrity caputer. God has written something concerning you. God has written something concerning you. It has been hidden in the sight of the king for many years. What is the king of the Lord? He has tried to sabotage you. This is not where it will be done. There is not a place where it will be done. This is not a place where it will be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. The people of the world are going to be done. Pambariata Sila, Fredegala de Beregaladesh, Ikaparakala da Badakayala Gadaba. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. We're going to spend the next, we're going to spend the next few minutes to praise God. We're going to pray to Him through songs. We're going to approach Him Hallelujah. with faith. We're going to approach Him with confidence in our hearts that He will arise from His throne and attend to every need represented here in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. The God of Abraham, I seek out the God. Jehovah is the man of God. His mercy is enjoyed forever and ever. Always oh, his holy day, holy day. is the God of Abraham, I seek out the God. Over is the man of war. Oh, 
Powerful praises San Andreas since we have. Uh, next, Brother Isaac will lead us on prayer. Over to you, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are going to be reading about three scriptures before we go to prayers, and I want us to just get set. The first one is First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32, our anchor scripture. The second one is Isaiah chapter 46, verse 1. Someone is going to read Luke chapter 11, verse 22. First one, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. Second one, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 1. And the third one, Luke chapter 11, verse 22. I'm going to start from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. Why someone is going to be opening to 
Isaiah chapter 46, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32. If after the ma- manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. The key word here is beast. <laughs> What advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Who is going to read for us? Isaiah chapter 46, verse 1. Isaiah 46, verse 1. Bell boweth down, Nebo stopped, stupid. Their idols were upon the beast and upon the cattle. Their carriages were heavy loading. They were burdened to the weary beast. The next thing, can you help us read Luke chapter 11, verse 22? Luke chapter 11, verse 22. But when a stronger than he shall come mm-hmm. upon him and That's overcome right. him, he taketh from him all his hammer, wherein he trusted and believed and divided his spoils. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> he said that when a stronger than him shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his hammer, wherein he trusted. Strong men are relative. Strong men are relative. Please never ever you forget that. When they say this situation is impossible, impossibility is relative. When they say when a person jumps up, the person cannot do without coming down. That law is relative. But the Bible says when it's stronger than him. Are you facing anything that looks like a mountain? Oh my God, when am I going to overcome this? Please bear in mind that that thing, the difficulty you call difficulty, is relative. When a man, let me use money to explain it. When a man with $1,000 enters a shop that sells just sweets, he's going to buy a lot of it. But that same man, when he enters a shop that's just a suit, is $36,000. The man is broke. He's poor, very poor. Strong men, strong situations are relative. The Bible says, when he's stronger than him. If you want to fight any strong situation, stop beating the air. Stop trying to struggle with that strong man. The point that you even have to struggle means the difference between you and that strong man is not so much. It's not so much. It's not so much. But when he's stronger than him at every level, when he's stronger than him, when he's stronger than him, I want to burn that into our spirit before I begin to talk about something we want to discuss today. Now, the first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8, he said, After the manner of men, I have fought with the beasts at Ephesus. I have fought with the beast at Ephesus. What advantage is it in if the dead rises? That means he's trying to tell you that for me to contend with the beast of Ephesus is because it is true. It's a truth. Not just true. It's truth that the dead will rise. So the context here is I fought with the beast of Ephesus. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 1, he said, Bell, bow it down. Nebo, stupid. Their idols were upon the beasts. When Bell and Nebo were transiting from one place to another, they did not put their idol on something weak. One of the key places they put their idol upon was upon a beast. Why? Because when you see a beast, your first reflex action is to run. You don't present an idol and you sugarcoat it. No, it's going to be made a mess of. People are not going to value it. They may even reject it. But when you bring a beast, even if they don't like it, they must bow to it. Even if they don't like that idol, because there's a beast threatening them and say, if you like, don't bow, I will eat you up now. They must bow. And that's why Bell and Nabal were very wise. They know that they are going to be, they are going to be, they are going to be selling their idol. They are going to be showcasing their idol. They are going to be, they are going to be moving their idol and want to invade the territory. The first thing they did was to get a beast. A beast means whether by hook or crook, you must bow to this idol. When they were carrying their contraband into the nations, they put it on a beast. They were like, whether you like it or not, you must swallow this contraband. Is it not the same thing that the devil is doing now? When you want to fund, when you want to transport the idea of darkness, you put it on a beast and say, whether you like it or not, you must bow because your children's school fees is at stake. Whether you like it or not, you must bow because your next meal is at stake. An idol upon the beast. Even Jesus Christ, he said, don't go, don't go and begin to say, I want to do morning cry. He knee in the city of Jerusalem until he be endued with power on an eye. I want to put you on a beast, on a terrific creature that they cannot resist. They cannot gainsay. That when you go to a city, you will turn it upside down. 
whether the whatever whatever structure whatever structure that have been established in that place it you will turn it upside down i want to put you on a beast called the power of the holy ghost that is irresistible we are carrying a contraband into the nation that's the truth we are carrying a contraband and we cannot carry it upon something weak it's upon a beast that whether they like it or not they must swallow our god whether they like it or not, they must bow to the king of kings. If after the manner of men, I have fought with the beast of Ephesus. It's only beast that can fight with a beast. It's only, a, you cannot begin to contend with a beast when you are a catch. You are going to be eating up. So we are today, we are talking about binding the strong. You can never bind the strong man when you are, when you are a civilian, when you are just like that. The first prayer we are going to pray is God and power. No, no, no. I'm too weak. There is a lot of fears in my heart. There's a lot of limitations already by my by the exposition of what, whatever that has happened around me. There's a lot of limitations already. Empower me. Empower me for this strong man to bow. The strong man is related to the anointing. The strong man is related to the anointing I carry. Can you do something eternal to my spirit? That's what we're going to be praying now. You are going to open your mouth and begin to pray, God, do something eternal to my heart. Whatever mountains you want to overcome, whatever challenges you want to pull down, empower me and grace me. No, 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 no. I can't. if they are going to go down for they are going to pack up by the side and say, no, 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 it's not your own we want. That will be enter a city that they don't have a choice. That must be bound to our God. That is not that. And the Lord has come and told me to tell. I need to get the seed. I'm a man of him at all. I need that as a failure. And the community of all. All of them in my life. All of them in my life. I am too weak for this assignment. the of of idols. They are names of they were I read that how dare you carry Jesus into the nation without bearing the heart of a beast, without carrying the restless spirit of a beast? When you check our fathers, when you check our fathers, ah, Neko When you check, when you check, you check Ramat Bonke. That man is a terrific creator. He enters into a city, no matter their religion, they must bow. I'm not going to tell you that I'm not going to tell you that I'm That situation you are saying there is because you are not a beast enough. It's because you are not terrifying enough. It's because you are not hot enough. I'm not going to tell you that 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 I'm not going to you cannot carry Jesus to the without being a man with the heart of a beast. Without being a beast, you cannot bear Jesus to the nation. Jesus Christ is a contraband. Whether they like it or not, they must follow my Jesus. 
Empower me, oh God. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. We have been empowered by God. These prayers are not, they are not, they are not just doing words. No. God is doing something eternal to your spirit already. And in that same vein, you are going to begin to prophesy. Be a prophet to yourself. Every situation that has held you bound, every limitation, you are going to become that strong man that begins to pray against them, begin to make decrees. Clear God's decrees. Be a prophet to yourself this night. Be a prophet to yourself wherever you are now. Be a prophet to that situation. Okay, Barata. Whatever the enemy has inflicted you with, be a prophet to yourself. Begin to make clear cut declarations. It's over. It's over. It's over forever. In the name of Jesus, the financial limitation is over. It's over forever. In the name of Jesus, I can be the Lord. Make a decree. Make a decree. Be a prophet to yourself. Be a prophet to yourself. Be a prophet to yourself. in my marital life, no devil of Nothing of the work of darkness, every demonic spirit, I raise an execution angel. Execution angels, Raka Baraka Lada Bada, execute government spirit, Rego Baraka Aliada Kabalada, Jaga Jaga Lega Berada, come and sit on the doctor, only fighting daughter of Babylon over community road, Rapa Baba Baba Kailo San, Ferre Kemina Subrasalia, and Red Kemina Spike Baba. I'm a man. 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 I'm a
Verse 32. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting scripture. So I'm going to pray with it that it opens our eyes of understanding to a lot of things. Number one, Paul the Apostle said, Eve after the manner of man. That is, there is a characteristics of man that we should also have. If we don't have it, then it is questionable if we are men in generic, either man or woman, if we are men at all. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Paul said, if after the manner of men, after the manner of men, we are gathered here tonight because this is after the manner of men. And you will know why. The disciples told those people that were complaining in the heart of the apostles. said, we would rather give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the world than to be serving tables. They were speaking after the manner of men. Jesus told the disciples, pray that ye enter not into temptation but they slept and they entered into temptation they acted out of the manner of men if after the manner of men like Johannes said earlier he said Jesus will rise up very early in the morning and go to a far, a far place a quiet place Mark 1 and there he prayed after the manner of men and this is our creator the Bible says and Peter while they were making the food ready he prayed on the house top and he fell into a trance after the manner of men why because Colinius had just received an angelic visit Visitation. And God had to communicate with Peter because he needed Peter there. The angel had told Colinius, go send for Peter. But after the manner of men, Peter was praying. Colinius saw, saw that vision while he was doing his devotion. After the manner of men. Let's look at our lives. Does our existence correspond to the manner of men? Or are we living a life that corresponds to those who are not men? I don't know what to call them. Maybe after the manner of animals, because animals do not need to pray. But if you are a man, if you are a human being, if you are a woman, if you are on the surface of this earth, there is a manner that corresponds to your existence. And look at what Paul said. He said, if after the manner of men, I have fought. If after the manner of men, I have fought. Which means because you are a woman being, you are programmed to fight. It is after the manner of men. Warfare, spiritual warfare, it is part of our cardinal regimen of existence. If we don't do this, the last, the last part of that verse says, let us eat and tomorrow we die. You see that? To exist for every 24 hours, we need to live to fight after the manner of men. We fight for our survival. We fight for our sustenance. We fight for our existence. We fight for our visibility. 
after the manner of men. So it is not peculiar to this generation. After the manner of men, Abraham wrestled with God for Sodom and Gomorrah. After the manner of men, Moses prayed that God should repent from destroying Israel. After the manner of men, Joshua wrestled, prayed with that captain of the, of the host of the Lord and delivered Jericho to the people of God. After the manner of men, Aaron stood between the living and the dead when the plague was destroying them. After the manner of men, all the apostles wrestled. After the manner of men, Samuel lifted up an altar and he called the name of the Lord and God sent abushment to the Philistines. After the manner of men, David knelt down and prayed when he was holed up in the cave and Saul was pursuing his life. Men ought always to pray. After the manner of men, I have fought. And then particularly, Paul was talking about a particular battle. He said, I fought with beasts at Ephesus. If there was beast at Ephesus, there will be beast in Corinth. If there was beast in Corinth, there will be beast in Galatia, and so on and so forth. And he didn't say just one beast. He said beast in plural. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts, there is a beast in your lineage. There are beasts in your tribe. There are beasts in the present countries where you are now. There are beasts in your continent. And the Bible says, after the manner of men, we are to tackle those beasts. Do we remember Daniel wrestled with a beast? Oh, man, he wrestled with that beast for 21 days. And the angel of the Lord said, it is the prince of Persia. After the manner of men, he said, I have come now. I, I sought for reinforcement. Michael, the archangel, the prince, came and helped me. And then I'm going back now now to contend with the Greece, with the prince of Greece, the prince of Grecia. At that time, Medis and Persia were the civilization of the world. Every nation has a prince. Every civilization has a beast. Ephesus was the civilization of that time. It was massive. Great Diana of Ephesus. The whole world was worshipping a beast. They were under a particular civilization. Paul said, I, after the manner of men, it is not peculiar to me. It is not because I'm an apostle. It is just simply because I'm a man. Friend, you don't need a spiritual title to understand that we are at war. After the manner of men, begin to imagine in your mind's eye that a beast you've got to fight simply because you are a human being. That is just it. You are qualified to fight because you are in the blood. The blood of Christ has redeemed you. Paul the apostle said, but it is not necessary to fight for one reason. Paul said, if the dead rises not, then there is no need to fight. So we can eat and die if there is no resurrection of the dead. But do you know, there is nothing as true as the fact that dead do rise. Jesus, a typical example, is the firstborn from the dead. And in as much as dead do rise and they will rise at the resurrection, it is a fact that beast must be false. Therefore, we cannot go into a group that only eat and tomorrow they die. It is dangerous because we cannot change the fact that dead do rise. After the manner of men, what are the beasts in your circumstance? Beast in your sphere of influence. Beast against revival in your country. Beast. Because here, yeah, Paul was contending with the beast of Ephesus because he wanted, he needed to write a book in the Bible called Ephesians. And if Paul did not contend with the beast of Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 1 to 6 would be missing because nobody, no believer would be there. He needed to install the cross of Christ in an habitation of cruelty. It was at the beast of Ephesus that Paul wrestled with, with that great Diana. Great is the Diana of Ephesus. He wrestled with that beast and he planted the church of Christ there. There are certain books in your life that will never be written if you do not fight with the beast of your own Ephesus. There are certain stories you cannot tell if you don't fight with the beast of your own Ephesus. There are certain levels you cannot accomplish and you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot arrive at. There are certain conclusions you cannot make if you have not fought with the beast of Ephesus or your own beast of Ephesus. The question is this. 
Are you going to act in the same manner of men which is expected of us because dead do rise? Or we are just going to eat and tomorrow we die? Of course, the answer is evident in the fact that we are present here today. It's an indication that we want to follow the manner of men. And this is the time to do that. And so I'm going to call on a few of us to lead prayer on this passage contending and fighting with the beast of your own Ephesus. It may be beast against spirituality. It may be beast against the corrupted civilization of our age, where men and women love darkness more than light. It may be the beast of terrorism. It may be the beast of unrest, of war, of rumors of war, of poverty, of financial crisis. It may be beast of disease and pandemic. It, we, we need to wrestle against peace. In plural, because we are still in this world and dead do rise. I believe that this has given us understanding that it is a great privilege to be here because we are just acting after the manner of men. That tonight is one of those nights that you will forever remember. You took your place with men who have gone ahead of us. We are condemned to warfare. We cannot apologize for it. We will not live for chance. We cannot eat today and tomorrow we die. Never. Job experienced that. He didn't know how to fight with the beast that negotiated for his destruction and the destruction of his children. Or lost all his children in one day. He didn't fight after the manner of man. He cared for all of his resources. He had an avalanche of cattle. He had servants. He was living in a choice area. He was the, he was the richest man of an entire eastern country. Only one man. He didn't fight after the manner of men. And everything ended in one day. Satan negotiated for the demise of Job. But God spared his life and he escaped with the skin of his teeth. Why should we, should we go that direction when the Holy Ghost has given us wisdom? The manifold riches of Christ to reveal to the church principalities and power mysteries hidden from ages are now made known unto us i congratulate us because we are here tonight it is a night to fight and so i will call first on bro isaiah to begin to lead us in prayer for a few minute, minutes and then we'll call on another person as the spirit of god leads us to lead prayer also as the holy spirit leads us we are going to all pray in unison we are contending after the manner of men with the beast of Ephesus. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray and let's begin to commit every area of our life. You know the area of your life peculiar to you right now, where it's like there is a striving, there is a contention against your advancements, there's a contention against your progress, there's a contention against victory, against success, against breakthrough in your life. Begin to declare and pray and pray and declare victory. Take your place, take your position after the manner of men. Men ought always to pray because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, because we wrestle against principalities and powers. Begin to declare, begin to declare your victory. Begin to declare your victory. You begin to enforce your victory. The enemy has not come against us with, 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 with ordinary hands. The enemy has risen up with weapons of war. Rise up in the strength of the Lord this evening. As we have read, after the manner of men, I have fought. You need to fight. You need to fight a good fight. The good fight of faith. In defense of the glory of God over your life. In defense of the glory of God over your career, over your family, over your finances. Declare victory. In defense of the glory of God over your ministry, over your calling. In the name of Jesus. After the manner of men, I have fought in the name of you that you may stand at the end of the battle that you may lift up the banner of victory and you will say you have fight the good fight you have defended the purpose of God you have defended the purpose of the kingdom you have defended the purpose of God over your destiny open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus Father in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we have a choice of, 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 of living after the order of men that fall. 
fought. We have a choice of living after the manner of men that fought and won. We refuse to live after the order of men that ate and drank and they died. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we arise. We arise in the name of Jesus. We take our place of victory in the mighty name of Jesus. The enemy that is fighting against us, the devil, he knows, he knows that we have the victory in Christ. He knows that we have a vantage point of victory. And that is why the battle is intense. And that is why the battle is fierce. In the name of Jesus, lift up your armor. Lift up your, your weapons of war. In prayers tonight, as the Lord has given us this weapon of prayer, arise and arouse in the realm of the spirit with the weapons of prayer. Declare and decree your victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, every prince of Pasha standing against our arrival at the place of victory. Standing against our arrival at the place of testimony, we come against them in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every prince of Persia striving against my arrival at the place of victory, at the place where I can say I am fought. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Declare, 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 declare. We have the final say. The King of Glory in us as the final say. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah in us as the final say. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If they come as a beast, remember we ask in us the beast. The lion of the tribe of Judas. That is the beast mode in us activated. Open your mouth and roar and declare against every beast, every beast of darkness, every beast against our life, against our living. In the mighty name of Jesus, we enforce victory over them. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, bro, Andrew said we live to fight, we live to fight, and we fight to live. In the name of Jesus, we must live, we must fight to live. We come against them, we come against forces of darkness, territorial spirit, spirit from the pit of hell. We send them back to hell. We send them back to hell where they belong. We are meant to live. We are meant to be alive. We are meant to live for the glory of God. Let's send them back to the pit of hell where they come from. We overcome them in the name of Jesus. We overcome them by the blood of the Lamb. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Face those beasts. You know those beasts. You know the areas of your life that they are attacking. Face them in the name of Jesus. Face them according to the order of the lion of the tribe of Judah. In the name of Jesus. I live. I shall not die. I live. I shall not die. My destiny lives. My career lives. My marital life lives. My spiritual life lives. I cannot die. I am not meant to die. I live to live. In the mighty name of Jesus, I take my place of victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I place my place of victory. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let's pray for the reign of righteousness in the nation. The devil is fighting every the, a daily war against righteousness in our land. Remember, righteousness is not a nation. This is righteousness that will bring life to men in all nations. Sin is a reproach against men. It's a reproach upon all nations. Let us arise against right or righteousness, or righteousness in the church, or righteousness on the altars, or righteousness against the soul of men. Let us arise against them. Let us roar against the beast of unrighteousness. Let us send that beast back to the feet of hell where it belongs. In the name of Jesus, righteousness reign. 
Give righteousness rain, seeds will rain. Give righteousness rain. Economy will be boost. Economies will be alive. Give righteousness rain. Financial system to boom. And men will be able to survive. Let us pray. Let us pray for the reign of righteousness. The name of Jesus. Let us come against every knowledge that is contrary to the knowledge of God. In our strength, in our nation, in our careers. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let righteousness reign. Oh God, let righteousness reign. In the name of Jesus, every demon of religious, of religious of idolatry, every demon of of of, of Satanism, every religion of, 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 of righteousness, every religion of righteousness, we come against them. Every strange worship, we come against them. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Let every knee bow. Let every tongue confess Jesus. Let every knee bow. Let every tongue confess Jesus. Let the knees be broken. Let the knees of the beast be crushed. Let the knees of religion with our righteousness. Let it crushed and broken. Remember, Dagon before the Ark of God's covenant. Dagon before the Ark of God's covenant. Remember, it's broken out. Remember, it's broken out. Remember, we come against every idol of lands and nations. We come against them as the Ark of God's covenant. As the agent of righteousness and agent of life to the nations. We come against them. They cannot stand. They cannot stand. Who are thou, you great body? Who are thou, you great beast? Before the act of God's covenant. Who are thou, you great beast? Before Zerubbabel. Before Isaiah. You are pushed by that. The ruler of the nation. The ruler of the country. The ruler of my career. The ruler of my marriage. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is so. In the mighty name of Jesus, it is done. In the name of Jesus. I call with the name. Amen. Every knee must bow and every tongue begin to confess. Every tongue begin to confess Jesus over the nations of the heart, over the realms of the heart, over my life, over careers, over destinies. Let every tongue begin to confess Jesus. In the Let us pray against every prophet of righteousness, every princess of Baal, every prophet of Baal. Let us pray for the fire of righteousness, the fire from above to come down to quench them, to lift them off the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, every ministry of Baal, every priest of Baal, in the churches, in the nations, in the territories of the earth, we command fire from heaven. We command destruction from heaven upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, they are being the ones standing against the righteousness of God. They have been the ones scheming against the reign of God. They have been the ones scheming against the priests of peace. Oh, and there is war, and there is chaos, and there is, there, is, there is famine in the land. There is death in the land. The people have eaten, eaten the, 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 the poisonous porridge, and there is death. There is death in the pot. We come in the name of Jesus. Every device, every cook of righteousness, every cook of, 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 of death for the people. For the nations of the earth, we come in the name of Jesus. We all sit them, we all push them in the name of Jesus. No beast is permitted to survive. No beast is permitted to live. We the men are the ones meant to live. We are meant to survive. Every priest, every priest of the land, cooking the pot of poisonous meals for the souls of men, cooking the pot of poisonous meals for the destinies of men. In the name of Jesus, we come against them. We all seek them. In the mighty name of Jesus, because we disengage them over the land. Yeah, in the area that I'm living in, and I have seen is close by areas, and in the whole country that is uh, 
this piece of uh, lukewarmness working that in years or dec decades there haven't been a mighty move of God and it's not a natural thing that there's just anyone is it God is not raising anyone that his spirit is not moving mightily in decades no but there is this beast of Luke from a speed of <laughs> spiritual laziness working and I don't think this is only place the only on the country on all the continent this is happening but I believe this same beast is working in multiple places but let us together stand against this beast that we will see mighty revival mighty baking why we not look look warmest but fully completely hot onto God peace people are completely just as is full burning for him so let us together stand against this beast of lukewarmness of coldness of spiritual laziness the Lord will take, will take we will take our stand against this beast because we are in the fight of spirit in spiritual and spirit and we come not by our but the strength, by our strength, we come in such the crazy one is the stronger one is the one who binds to Satan and cast in this name of Jesus Christ we stand against the spirit of Luke, the spirit of laziness, the spirit of spirit of God, in the spirit of God, the spirit of the spirit of God, the spirit of the spirit of God, we have come to introduce the spirit, the body of the Holy Spirit, the complete God, the complete light, the in rise, 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 walking, running in the spirit, even fight, and shining with the gaslight. And the darkness comprehended it. Not. The darkness cannot comprehend the light we are going to. The darkness, the church is happy. The darkness, the people are believing because they don't see the light because they see only the darkness. But we are coming in the name of Jesus Christ to shine the light of the Lord so that the light of the Lord will fall from us. the spirit has been born. It's time to fellow. It's time to pray. It's time to fight. The man of man against the spirit. Beast against the beast. The the cascudo to put. She the cascudo to put. She the cascudo to put. the put. She the cascudo the kingdom of the cascudo to put. She the cascudo the final of day he buys the world, and we are dead now. We are the final of day he buys the world, and we are dead now. 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 In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's begin to worship God and let's begin to bring our prayer to a close. Let's begin to thank God because we are going out with victory over beast. Beast of sickness, beast of disappointment, beast of disease, beast of discouragement, beast of despair, beast of sin, beast of iniquity. Let's begin to worship God because he has given us the victory. We are coming back into this time after the manner of men to wrestle again, to, to be in the gap, to stand. Let's begin to worship God because we have the victory. Victory in the name of Jesus. Because Christ poured principalities and powers. He made an open show of them. He nailed them to his cross. He triumphed over them in it. Having spoiled powers and principalities. Let's glorify God because we are seated in heaven 
heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above principalities and powers and we can destroy the works of the devil because for this cause the son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the work of the devil we have all shot in a wave of renewal a wave of awakening a wave of righteousness a wave of the glory of God where our eyes shall see the wonder walking move of the Holy Ghost from continent to continent sons and daughters who prophesy young men we see visions old men we dream dreams in that day with all his spirit upon our flesh every beast that is in dream that great move of the Holy Ghost tonight as we are prayed we receive victory over those entrances for our personal lives our families our careers our ministry for the work of God upon our hands victory 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 we will not leave for chance we will not leave for chance we will not eat today and die tomorrow we will be conscious of the reality and the responsibility of the manner of man in the name of jesus 